Hello, Pendleton Elementary families. My name's Mr. Schill. I'm the principal at Pendleton Elementary Primary, and it is my privilege to welcome you to our first ever virtual kindergarten blast off. That's right, last week when you were here for Roundup, you got a bag that has all kinds of materials inside it. You're gonna get that bag if you can, and we're gonna take that out, and we're gonna go through different activities with your future kindergarten teachers. So boys and girls, families, get all ready. Here comes blast off. Hi boys and girls, I'm Mrs. Brand. I'm one of the kindergarten teachers here at Pendleton Elementary. And this is my kindergarten classroom. And we're gonna do a sorting activity today. Sort means to group things how they're the same. So if you still have your Skittles that were in your green bag, you got it round up, you can go get those out now. We're gonna sort them by color today. So if you have anything at your house, you can sort by color. You can go get it and you can sort it by color. So I'm gonna put all my Skittles out. And I see that I have some purple Skittles and some yellow, green, orange, and red. So I'm gonna put all the purples together in a group because those all are the same. They're matching the same color. I'm going to put the red Skittles over here, the orange Skittles together here, the green, and what's my last group going to be? That's right, it's going to be yellow. The yellow Skittles go here. Let's count how many groups we have. One, two, three, four, five. We have five groups. Ooh, let's count how many yellows there are all together in the yellow group. One, two, three, four. We have four yellows. How many greens do we have? One, two, two. So after you sort, you can count to see how many you have left. What are some other things you could sort at home that you might have at home? Maybe you could help mom and dad sort the laundry. You could sort it by color. If you have cereal at home, you maybe can sort cereal by colors or shapes, like Lucky Charms, they have different shapes. What about your silverware? Could you help mom and dad after, after you do the dishes and sort the silverware by the spoons and the forks? There's lots of things you can sort at home. Have fun sorting. Hello, future kindergartners and kindergarten families. I'm Mrs. Cookston. I'm a kindergarten teacher here at Pendleton Elementary, and I'm gonna share a little bit about kindergarten writing today. First off, I wanna introduce you to a very important group of kids. This is, these are the super kids, and they help us learn to read and write during kindergarten and even in first grade. So you're gonna to get to know these friends a lot. So now I'm gonna show you a little bit about what they share with us, so follow me. All right, at your kindergarten roundup, you should have gotten a name tag. It may not look exactly like this, but it will be similar. But in kindergarten, this is the one that we use. And on here, it's going to have your name. And so I wanna show you on the lines here how we write in kindergarten. It's important parents for you to help your kids realize that we do not want them to write their name in all uppercase letters. The first one should be uppercase. I'm gonna use my daughter's name to help me here and all the rest of them should be lowercase letters on the lines. The super kids are going to help us learn all about those lines. They're called ice cream lines because there's an ice cream sundae right here. There's a strawberry, there's a vanilla, and there's a chocolate. And we're gonna learn all about those lines and how some letters are really, really tall, some letters are small, and then some letters fall like the J in my name. So we are gonna learn all about this. So parents, if you can make sure that you have your kids practice on the lines like this all summer long, that there's uppercase and then all the rest are lowercase, that is gonna help out your kindergartner immensely next year. And we're gonna learn a lot about the super kids and how to write each one of these letters. Have a great evening. I'm Mrs. Wolverton. I'm one of the kindergarten teachers and we are showing you some things that we do in kindergarten with our videos today. I'm going to read you a book because we do a lot of reading in kindergarten and I hope you're doing a lot of reading at home with your parents. And this is called The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl.
And in kindergarten, we talk about the front cover of the book, the back cover of the book, and something called the title page, which has the same information as the front cover. It has the title, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. It has the author's name by Eric Carl. And in this case, Eric Carl is also the illustrator. Uh, if there's only one name here, you know that that person is so talented that they could write the words and do the pictures. This is just a dedication page for my sister, Krista. Nice little sunshine. Oh, look at the beautiful pictures. Eric Carl painted these pictures. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. And there's that little egg. I wonder what's in that egg. There's the moon. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop, out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. There he is. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. A lot of food, isn't it? The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and... He was a beautiful butterfly. And that's the end of it. And parents, if you will, when you read to your children, if you will track the print like I did with my star, but you could use your finger, um, that will help them learn some of the print concepts like reading from left to right, knowing the difference between words and letters, things like that. All right, thank you. Can't wait to see you next year. Bye. Hi, families. I'm Mrs. Kemper. I'm one of the kindergarten teachers here, and I'm going to go over the supply list you will need. So first off, you need a big backpack to put all the important goodies in that you have for kindergarten, like your lunchbox and your go folder. Speaking of folders, you need one pocket folder that goes back and forth. Make sure your name's on it so we know whose folder's whose. You need one box of crayon, uh, whoops, Kleenexes, I guess. You need hand sanitizer. We also need
glue sticks, a box of crayons, the 24 count is fine, pink bar erasers, two of them, and the important part too, scissors, get the blunt shape, not the pointed because we're still learning how to cut. You need black thin markers, the low expo markers, the dry erase, black if all possible. And to put all those good fun things in, you need an art box. Put your name on the art box so they don't get confused with the other art boxes in our room. Also, a thing of wipes and a thing of markers. The 10 count will work just great. And that's what you need for kindergarten. You can find the list on the school website as well, so you can go double check to make sure you have everything. And I'll see you at the start of school.